Are you trying to figure out what is the best strategy for chunking your data in your RAG application? Or you don't know what is the best number of total number of chunks that you retrieve to your prompts to answer user question in RAG? Or you don't know what are the best practices for putting values on parameters of your API called your LLM? Well, you are dealing with hyperparameter optimization challenge, my friends. And there are some best practices to figure out what are the best values for these parameters that I just talked about to have your best RAG application. Then, let's go! Before we start, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will get notified for the next video. Thank you. All right, welcome to hyperparameter optimization for rack. For some of you, hyperparameter tuning might be a new concept, but in general, in specifically AI domain, when you want to train your own models, your own machine learning models, there are some parameters you have to define a value for them before you start the, the training phase. For example, if you're creating a neural network model, you have to specify how many neurons, how many layers of neurons you have to put inside as a parameter to train your model. And of course, any different value will certainly affect or affect the final performance of your model. So the question is, what is the best practice to put values there? What values are the best one to choose? So there are different stat strategies on how to choose the best value for those parameters, which is called hyperparameter tuning. The same thing here for RAG. Of course, for RAG, when we chat with our data using, let's say, an LLM, we are not necessarily training our own model. That's true. But still, we are dealing with some parameters. For example, what is the good chunk size when I want to chat with my data? Or what are the top K value, top 5, top 10, top 8 value that I need to bring that top K chunks to the prompt to answer user question. This is another parameter for rack. Or in, let's say when you call GPT-4, there's a parameter called temperature, top P. These are different values that when you change them, that will considerably change the performance of your rack or any LLM app. So if you have to come up with a strategy on how we choose the best values, here G2 is just an example of parameters that we use for rack. Good news is, Llama Index already did a great job to create a wrapper for us and I'm going to go through that quickly and I will add this code reference inside Discord channel and the link of the Discord channel is under video description below. You will go there and there's a reference section in Discord channel. You click on it, you will get access to this code. So obviously I need to install some packages from Llama Index. I already did that in Google Colab. You just need to run it anywhere that you have Python. So I don't want to go through these packages. You can check from the code. And what I tested using Llama index demo, I am trying to chat with a PDF, but obviously this can be your own data, your own PDF, but this is just a paper published about Llama 2. So it has several pages. I don't want to go through the details, but it doesn't matter really. It's just a sample of text that we're going to chat with that, right? So we downloaded that in our local directory. And in order to create index out of it, we have to load PDF reader from Loma index. And we have the path specified, which is our local directory that we downloaded the PDF. And we need to certainly parse this document as needed for later on chunking it. Now for evaluating what gonna be the parameters, a good choice of parameters for our rack, we need to evaluate the results, right? For example, if my chunk size is 512, I need to evaluate my rack to see if it's a good answer or not. It's a good choice of a parameter or not. If not, I'll go to another value, let's say 1024. So I need evaluation data set to check how good my um, rack is. That's why there's another JSON for, uh, file that I downloaded, so I'm going to show you quickly what it is. This evaluation data set has a list of questions about the PDF I showed you, which is, for example, what is the primary objective of Llama 2? And then the next question, next question. If I scroll down, here's the answer of that. The answer of the first question, the objective of Llama 2. The second question, which is the answer here, so on and so forth. So there's a list of questions and answers. I want to evaluate my rag based on this Q&A to see what rag I will have will work better based on the parameters that I choose for a rag. So here we downloaded this JSON file. I just want to show you how it looked like. Then we loaded from, from query response data set, which is coming from Loma index evaluation. Then here, in order to optimize anything, 
regardless of rag, AI, whatever, you have to define an objective function. So you should have a function to optimize this. And we're going to create that. How? Well, if we first import the stuff needed from Lama index, you will see how we call them. Here I'm defining some helper functions to use it in my objective function. So what are helper functions? First, I have a function to build index. It is using local disk, but obviously you might have your vector DB, your own index. So don't think about this is what you must do. And if the build, uh, index is not already there, it's try to actually rebuild it and load the index. The second helper function that I have is the one that does evaluation. How do we do evaluation? Well, we load that JSON file that I showed you, and using OpenAI embedding model, I will do the semantic similarity between the answers that I have in the JSON, which is my ground truth, versus the answers that the chatbot will give to me. If the similarity is too high, that means, yeah, the chatbot responded as we had in our ground truth data set, so we get a good score. That means our parameters that we're tuning are good for rank. So we have these helper functions, and we now we need to call this to the objective function. This is a function we're going to um, optimize. So what, what are the inputs of these functions? The input's going to be the parameters that you're going to optimize. The chunk size, docs is fixed. At the top k, you're going to optimize this ground truth data set and the responses of that so you need, you need to have these two for the evaluation and we build the index using the helper function we define on the top obviously you need to query this to check the similarity and compare that with your evaluation data set here running calling the evaluation helper that we define on the top and then we calculate the mean of similarity score for all that evaluation json file Okay, so you can actually run it uh, asynchronously as well if you want to have that scale, but here it was just a synchronized call. Now, there are two ways that you can, in Llama index, optimize those parameters. The first one, which is the default one, is imported by param tuner. This one does grid search. What does that mean? So when you load this, you're just going to tell, here's the objective function that I'm going to parameterize, uh, sorry, optimize with these parameters inputs. What are the parameters inputs? We have defined that here. I want to see if this chunk size is better, or this one is better, or this one. I don't know. How about top k? One is better, two or five. Which combination of these two is better? These are the parameters that we need to find the best answers for that, and you have some fixed parameters. For example, documentation is fixed, or the reference evaluation data set is fixed. So you need to define this as a, as a, as a list here, and then you load it inside param tuner, and it will start optimizing for me through grid search what does that mean grid search will use all combination of your parameters to check which one is better for example it will choose first chunk size as 256 with top k1 with top k2 and with top k5 then it will choose this one as a chunk size again with top k1 top k2 top k5 so you will say that oh mg that's pretty expensive it's gonna try all the combinations of these parameters to, to um, optimize you're right, but the, the value is you're going to try everything possible and get the best one. What is the cons, pros and cons? Well, it's expensive. So one way is doing that, and obviously after running this, it tells me here's the similarity score. That's a good one. And when I choose top key as two out of these ranges, this one, and when the chunk size is 512, which is this one, you will have the best rag. Problem solved. Now, what are different ways? MG, I might have multiple parameters, not just two parameters, and more values. It's going to be too expensive and also sometimes very uh, timey. It's going to take time. That's why there's a second option called Raytune that Llama Index created a wrapper out of it. You do exactly the same thing as I told you. You define your object function, the parameter dictionary that I told you at the top. Then I got the similar score, again, using this method as well. But what is Raytune? Well, if you know Ray and Dask stuff, Ray is, you, it might remind you distributed processing. It's a, it's a framework that will let you to scale, especially when you have a huge amount of data, over multiple nodes of machines or a cluster. And for the same reason, Ray also provided an optimization solution called Ray, Ray Tune that will let you do hyperparameter tuning in a scalable manner. You can run it over a cluster. So what are the benefits? Here is why you should choose Ray Tune. First of all, it's not just a simple grid search that will do all the combinations. On back end, they have some cutting edge optimization algorithms that they would know which parameter values should be tested to give you the best rack. 
not necessarily testing all of them. So you will finish your optimization faster, but in a less costly manner, and not necessarily try every possible combination. And they have some scalability options that I told you. For example, you can have distributed over a cluster to do hyperparameter tuning. So long story short, in RAG, we are also dealing with hyperparameter tuning. Don't think that, oh, you're not training any new model, MG. Why, why are you talking about hyperparameter tuning? Well, there are some parameters in RAG. I just mentioned two of them as an example that you're dealing with. And I wanted to give you this art of possibility that you can think about being more efficient and intelligent on choosing these parameters. Ray tune, pram tuner, llama index, they were just examples and I'm pretty sure you might be already more expert on optimization and some other well-known packages that they do optimization. So as long as you can define your objective function, put it in your optimization algorithm or logic and done. You get your parameters as long as you have an evaluation strategy and a ground truth to compare to your chatbot responses to check which parameter is good based on your rag parameters. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and gave you some other possibility. If yes, I would be very thankful if you liked this video and write your comment down below. And we'll see you in the next video. You cannot beat a river into submission. You have to surrender to its current and use its power as yours. Not everything in life will make sense, and not everything has to. Your intelligence will lead you far, but no further. Silence your ego, and you will see that your power will rise beyond your imagination. Dream big, my friends, believe in yourself, and take action. Till next video.